Hello everybody! Last weekend I got a chance to see Dracula Untold, a movie whose title kind of contradicts itself by the time this movie is over, because by then the story's been told. Probably should have thought that one through a little bit better, but uh, well, there's a lot of things about this movie that they really should have thought through a bit better. Uh, it, it does a few good things, it does a lot of really bad things as well, but uh, yeah, the story behind this one is... Uh, uh, Vlad, Prince of Wallachia, or Vlad the Impaler, as he came to be known, uh, started out as a young man who was uh, taken by the Turks as a political hostage, uh, along with a thousand other boys from his kingdom, which uh, kinda happened to the real Vlad the Impaler, not exactly how this movie mentioned it, uh, there's no mention of his brother, for example, who was also a political hostage, but uh, in any case, he and the, these other thousand young boys were taken by the Ottoman Turks and trained from a young age to be these mindless killing machines, basically. Uh, think kind of like the Unsullied from Game of Thrones, except without the castration, as far as I know. Um, but at some point, after growing up and going through many vicious battles on behalf of the Turks, he decides he's done with all this because he's a man of peace. He's done killing. He wants to go home and raise a family. And 20 bonus points to you if you get this reference. Why am I still talking like this? I have no idea. But anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So he goes home, gets married, has a son, and the, while they're telling this origin story at the beginning of the movie, uh, it's all being narrated by his son, who describes him as the greatest ruler that the kingdom of Wallachia, which I don't think is ever actually mentioned by name in the movie, come to think of it. Um, but anyway, his kingdom, whatever it's called, he is the greatest ruler the kingdom has ever known, a wise and kind and just king who loved his people and ruled the land well, which is not a popular opinion of, of Vlad III. He's, um, it, you don't generally come to be known as Vlad the Impaler by being an all-around nice guy. Um, now, granted... His own people would probably have a higher opinion of him than most. Um, in fact, it is my understanding that in Romania, even though he acknowledged that he did do some very, very bad things, he generally only did them to his enemies, and at least for the Romanian people, he was normally regarded as a bit of a folk hero. The rest of the world would disagree with that, I think, but, um, well, there it is. So, anyway, fast forward a bit, and he's grown up, he's married, he's got a kid, and life is pretty good. Until one day, the Turks come rolling in, because I guess, as part of some deal they have, Vlad has to pay tribute to them in some ridiculous amount of silver coins. But this time, in addition to the silver, they want to take another 500 boys for the army. Including the son of Vlad. And Vlad at first considers it because he wants to keep his kingdom at peace because he's a man of peace. He's done killing. Why am I talking like this again? And, but, but at some point, the Turks say something stupid and he's like, you know what, homie, don't play that. And he just kills them all. And then he realizes he, there's no way he can take on the entire Turkish Empire by himself. Taking on a handful of grunts is one thing, but... A thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand soldiers, that's not going to work. But one day, while he and his men are out patrolling, they happen to come across this vampire's den. And so he goes in there and has a little chat with uh, this vampire, played by Charles Dance. Um, I don't think the vampire is ever actually named, so I'll just call him Vampire Tywin. Which would be an interesting twist to Game of Thrones if he actually was a vampire in that show, but... Um, it wouldn't explain why he's able to go out in the sunlight all the time. But anyway, uh, basically, uh, Vampire Tywin tells him that he has been imprisoned in this cave because reasons, and the only way he can escape his imprisonment is by 
turning some other guy into a vampire by having him drink his blood. And for some reason, this will allow him to leave his prison. I'm not exactly sure how this works. The movie doesn't explain this very well, but whatever. So now here's where the movie gets just a little bit silly. And I'm sure this is one of those ideas that sounded good to the writers on paper. But once you actually put it onto the screen, the more you think about it, the sillier it sounds. See, apparently, when you drink the blood of Vampire Tywin, you do turn into a vampire, but you're not a full-fledged vampire yet. There's apparently a three-day trial period. Um, a demo, if you will. And as long as you don't drink any human blood during the demo period, once the three days are up, then the demo expires and uninstalls itself and you go back to being a regular human. If you do, however, drink the human blood, then your software is paid in full and you are a full-fledged vampire. And you get a lifetime license on it at that point, apparently. And it sounds very silly the way I just described it, I'm sure, but that's because really it is. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it sounded cooler when they thought this up, but really, yeah, it's, it's kind of dumb. But yeah, so then he becomes a vampire and has to attempt to use his powers to defeat the Turkish army while at the same time fighting the urge to actually drink human blood so he can go back to being a regular human once this is all over. And that's the basic plot. Um, now, as far as good things in this movie, um, well, I'll warn you right now, I'm probably going to repeat myself a bit from my Annabelle vlog because in a way it's kind of this... Kind of similar, I don't really have any problems with the acting. Um, Luke Evans, who plays Vlad slash Dracula, I thought he did a good job. Uh, Charles Dance, he's Charles Dance, he's very good. Uh, Dominic Cooper plays the, uh, the Turkish Sultan Mehmed, uh, the leader of the Turkish army that's trying to uh, invade Wallachia or whatever the kingdom is supposed to be known as, even though they don't give its name. Uh, yeah, no real complaints there. Uh, the director, Gary Shore, according to his IMDb profile, this is the first full-length movie he's done. He's He has a short under his belt, I think, but that's it. Um, for a first-timer, not bad. Definitely not bad. Couple things he needs to work on. A little less shaky cam during the action scenes would be good. Um, it wasn't egregious, but it, it did bother me at a couple of times. But for the most part, the movie is very well shot. The action scenes were pretty cool. Um, I did like some of the effects in here. Like, when Dracula does his bat transformation, instead of just turning into a single bat, he transforms into, like, a swarm of bats, which is not something that you typically see with uh, most vampire stories, but... Uh, honestly, I kind of like the idea. I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, yeah, really, what it comes down to is the writing. And the writers also are doing their first full-length movie, and they certainly need a lot more work because I mean, the basic story of the leader of some kingdom who has to make the ultimate sacrifice for his people in order to save them by turning himself into a monster, that by itself, that's fine. That's doable. I can get behind that story. Uh, there are some specifics with the story, however, that don't work terribly well. Um, but I already mentioned the, uh, the three-day demo period for, for the vampire transformation. Um, also, when he becomes a vampire, the very first thing he does is flies out onto the battlefield and just slaughters a thousand Turks single-handedly. And after doing so, he just casually walks back to his castle, just goes before his people and says, you know what? Don't ask. Just don't ask. Just, I got this. Just roll with it. And surprisingly, they do. <laughs> they are very quick to accept that. Now, to be fair, if I was faced with a man who just slaughtered a thousand heavily armed soldiers single-handedly, I would probably do what he says as well. 
I, I, <laughs> I don't think I'd question it either. I, I'd be like, you know what? Hey, do your thing, man. I just, just don't hurt me and it's all good. Also, his sunlight vulnerability was a bit inconsistent. Uh, one scene in particular where he's uh, walking through this monastery and trying to do his best to stay out of the sunlight, you know, cutting around corners, sticking to the shadows. And one of the monks notices this and immediately realizes, oh, he must be a vampire. Because of course he does. And so once he ducks into a building, the monk responds by setting the building on fire and trying to burn this evil hellspawn. Of course, Drac just casually walks out of the building through the flames like, bitch, please. I just saved your asses and this is the thanks I get. You try to burn me out. And he walks out right into the street and suddenly the sunlight is not affecting him anymore. Consistency? What's that? Yeah. Uh, and to talk about some, some of the other stupid things that happened in this movie, I have to talk about the ending and I'll get into spoilers there, but before I do, let me just go straight to my final verdict. I would say don't waste your money seeing this in theaters. Just wait for it to hit cable. Maybe spend your money on a rental. I mean, Redbox is cheap nowadays, so I guess you're not wasting too much money on it if you rent it. But I, I'm definitely leaning towards wait for cable if you want to watch this movie at all. It's not worth much more than that. Uh, so now that we have that out of the way... Let's get into the major spoilers for the final battle. If you don't want any more spoilers, just stop the video right now. Last chance. Okay, so... Anyway, after he slaughters these 1,000 Turks, a sane person would think, hmm, maybe we might be outmatched here. But instead, Mehmed is like, you know what? Fuck this. He kills 1,000. I'll send 100,000. And so he does. And... As he sends these 100,000 troops, the, uh, the demo period is about to expire, so Dracula is desperately trying to fight them off before it expires. Um, unfortunately, in the chaos, one of the uh, Turkish soldiers gets to his wife and ends up throwing her off a cliff. Vlad goes after her, somehow is unable to catch her before she hits the ground, even though he's got these supernatural powers and can fly now, but apparently... I guess physics, terminal velocity, for some reason he can't catch her. So she hits the ground, somehow is not killed instantly, even though she just fell off a fucking thousand foot cliff. And... So she, she has a death scene that goes on for far too long, with... Surprisingly, no damage to her body whatsoever, no blood or anything. There's a remarkably small amount of blood in this entire movie. It's PG-13, which is one of the movie's problems. It needed to be bloodier. It really did. Th this would have done much better as an R. It's, the writing still would have been kind of stupid, but at least they could have let loose a bit with the, uh, with the action scenes and the fights and the vampires biting people and all that. Uh, but anyway, so she convinces him, hey... There's no way you're going to be able to kill them before the time is up. If you want to save the kingdom and our son, you're going to have to take my blood. So he does, and he goes back to the monastery and finds the handful of his people who are still left, turns them into vampires, because they're hungry for some revenge, and they're like, you know what, whatever we got to do, let's do it. And, so, and by this time, since he's become a full-fledged vampire, uh, Vampire Tywin is now free to leave his cave and go off and do whatever the fuck. And so, the final battle with the Turks begins. And to start with, Dracula basically just creates a thunderstorm that makes this massive cloud cover so the sun will no longer affect them. Since when do vampires have this power, and why would they have this power when that completely defeats the purpose of being vulnerable to sunlight in the first place? If you can just get rid of the sun like that, that's kind of dumb. But anyway, they go in and of course they start slaughtering all the Turks because, you know, a thousand Turks couldn't stand up to one vampire. Now that they're up against an entire coven, they are well and truly fucked. So... 
Drac eventually finds the Sultan hiding in his tent and thinks he's got himself an easy kill on his hands. Oh, but the Sultan has a trick up his sleeve. See, somehow he's figured out that Dracula is a vampire because of course he did. So all of those silver coins that Vlad has been paying him as tribute for all these years. Apparently, he's been keeping them on his person this entire time, all these thousands and thousands of coins. I guess because you never know when you might need them. Good to have them on hand. And so he's littered his entire tent with these. He's hung bags of them from the rafters and slices them open every once in a while to spill them on top of Dracula. And even when he's not coming into direct contact with the silver, he's still being weakened by it. And he's got a silver sword as well, because of course he does. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, there's an easy way out of this. If I'm Vlad slash Dracula in this situation, I'm thinking, you know what? You want to throw all this silver at me? That's fine. Kiss my ass, bitch. I'm immortal. I'm going to go wait outside. And me and my friends are just going to surround our tent and wait. because. You're human, you have to eat, and we don't. You can either come outside and meet me in battle out there, or you can wait in here and starve. Your choice. Bye. Vlad, however, is an idiot, so he keeps fighting. And there's a point in the battle where it looks like Mehmed might actually win because he grabs himself a wooden stake and tries to stab Vlad in the chest and... This is a really weird thing. Apparently, when you try to stab a vampire in the chest, in this movie, whatever clothing or armor they're wearing will actually start to dissolve and move out of the way to give the stake clearance. So you can still stab them in the chest. That's just stupid. There's no, there's no other way to say it. That's just dumb. I'm sorry. That, wow. How... How do you even come up with that? I don't know. But anyway, Vlad wins. He frees his son and tells him to go home. And of course, he can't go with him because he's a vampire now. And that's just not going to work out. And then he, with the snap of his fingers, gets rid of the cloud cover and kills all the vampires and himself. Oh, but he just barely survives because this one idiot decides to pull him into one of the tents and give him some of his blood to help him recover. And then... I can't believe they actually did this. Suddenly we fast forward to the present day. I did not think they were going to go in this direction, but they have present day sequel bait. Showing Vlad is still alive and kicking, as is Vampire Tywin. And yeah, that's where the movie ends. Now, I don't know if that sequel is ever actually going to happen, because from what I've seen, this movie isn't doing all that well. It's not doing terribly. It might just barely break even, but I don't know if it's going to do well enough that a sequel is going to be worth it. Um... Quite frankly, I don't think a sequel would be worth it, because if it's going to be anything like this movie, it's not going to be very good. Yeah, that's... See, I probably would have been okay... I was, I was okay with this movie in spite of some of the silliness until about the halfway point, but from then on, especially with the final battle, it just got really, really dumb. And... You know, while, while there are a few good things happening in here, there's not really enough to give it a solid recommendation. So, but like I said, maybe a rental, but I'd really leaning towards just waiting for cable. And that's about all I have to say about Dracula Untold. Until next time, take care.